Hi everybody, it's Tanya and welcome to today's video. Today's video is going to be my review of this book, The Makioka Sisters by Junihiro Tanizaki, because I recently finished reading it and I am very happy to report that I really, really enjoyed it. And this book was just a pleasure to read, so I'm very excited to finally talk about it with you. So this review is going to be spoiler free, don't worry about that. And I will tell you my rating that I gave to this book at the end of the review. So now let's talk about the story. The novel takes place in the late 1930s. It starts approximately in the middle, like 35, 36, and then it ends in 42. 42? Let me check. Yes. Then it ends in 1942. We follow the story of these four Makioka sisters, as the title suggests. But I would say that primarily we follow the story of two youngest sisters, Yukiko and Taeko. Taeko is the youngest and they also call her Koi-san. It's like Osaka, I guess, word, because people from Tokyo in the book didn't know this word. So <laughs> apparently it's an Osaka word used for a younger daughter in the family, Koi-san. These two sisters are very different to each other. They are like on the opposite spectrums of like characters, because Yukiko, she is very feminine. She is, just, she is this traditional Japanese lady who is quiet, doesn't talk too much. She usually always wears traditional uh, Japanese kimono, she never tells you what she thinks like straight and like straightforwardly. She kind of always goes in a roundabout way. Though actually when you get to know her, she has this like inner strength and it's actually she has her own opinions. It's just that she doesn't express them exactly, but she still gets her way. Like you cannot sway her. If she has decided something, you will not be able to sway her. So this is Yukiko. And then we have Taeko-san or Koi-san, who is this free-spirited. She is the most, I would say, modern member of the family. She is the youngest. She usually wears Western clothes. She is independent. She doesn't really care what people think about her. She wants to work. Um, which is like unthinkable for other women in the family. Like it's kind of disgrace to them. But she wants to work. She wants to earn her own living. So these are these younger sisters. We follow their stories from the perspective of their older sister, Sachiko. Sachiko herself is married. She has a daughter and she and her husband and her daughter and initially the whole family live in Osaka. Sachiko is the most in the family involved in like organizing the future of her sisters, primarily Yukiko, because Yukiko is older than Koi-san and it means that she needs to get married first, like they cannot uh, marry Koi-san first, that's why Koi-san has to wait. Uh, the problem with the book, like the main kind of plot of the book, evolves around finding a husband for Yukiko, which has been a trouble because they believe that she was born in an unlucky year, which would mean difficulties for her marriage and it, it would mean difficulties for finding husband for her and it yeah, it proves very difficult because the book takes place like throughout um, five, six years and throughout all of these years they practically are looking for husband for Yukiko. There is one more sister, Tsuruko. Tsuruko is the oldest, she is also married, she has a lot of children, like five or four children, I don't remember exactly. Uh, her husband works for a bank and eventually he gets promoted and he gets sent to Tokyo. So the family of the older sister has to move to Tokyo which she is not happy about, but it does mean that the family will have more money and because they have a lot of children, they need this money, so they decide to move. And because they move to Tokyo, 
you don't really see them a lot in the novel. These sisters, they kind of communicate together, but I would say that the older sister, she is the most uh, detached. She is, uh, she is kind of more in her own family, she is more like in her own problems, and that's why she doesn't really participate that much in um, her sister's lives, even though because she is the oldest, because like her family is the oldest, uh, they are actually supposed to provide for the unmarried sisters, for Yukiko and Koi-san, but they're unable to do so. They they kind of did that in, in Osaka, uh, but Tsuruko's husband couldn't really build relationship with Yukiko, first with Yukiko. Like I said, Yukiko is quiet, but she's actually very strong-minded. And if she doesn't like somebody, she doesn't like somebody. And it's kind of very difficult to find this contact with her. And that's what that's the problem that Tsuruko's husband faced. He did his his best to kind of help her and support her, but they just couldn't find common ground. They just didn't understand each other. And that's why Yukiko actually prefers leaving Sachiko's house with Sachiko's family. And especially after Tsuruko's family moves to Tokyo, she prefers to stay in Osaka. She doesn't want to go to Tokyo. So she prefers Osaka and that's why Sachiko is like the most involved sister in this whole situation with finding husband for Yukiko. And so as you can tell from what I have been telling you, this relationship with the family is the center of the story. Relationship between all of the members and how like kind of actions of all the members affect other members of the family and how they're trying to kind of organize each other's fortunes and support each other or maybe not support each other at certain points. So that's like the center the center of the novel. The Makioka family, where the sisters come from, used to be very rich and well-known family in Osaka. However, currently, after their father died, their fortunes are declining. They're not as rich anymore. People don't really kind of treat them with much reverence as they would like to. And however, they still keep this pride about their name, that they are the Makiokas. And along with keeping the pride, uh, and along with keeping like their appearances, they obviously try to keep traditional Japanese lifestyle, like this traditional Japanese household. And because of that, with this novel, you get to see a lot, really a lot of traditional Japanese lifestyle of pre-war Japan. You get to see their traditions, their customs, you get to see people, all the different people that lived in Japan at that time, kind of through the interactions of the Makioka family, like with whom they come into contact. So you will see foreigners from different countries, you will see Japanese people, like traditional Japanese people, or people who spent a lot of time in America, for example, and came back to Japan. You will see young people and old people, rich and poor, traditional and modern. So you will see this kind of mosaic, mosaic of Japanese society of that time in this book, which I found really interesting. Like when I was reading this book, I had this feeling that this novel is like the ultimate, <laughs> the ultimate Japanese novel because you get to see so much of the traditions. It shows not only culture, it also shows way of thinking of people, different characters in the society of that time. For example, you get to visit quite a few miais. I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, miai? So miai is like a meeting between prospective groom and the bride. Like they're not, like, they are not officially engaged, but they are just, you know, it's kind of meeting for them to get to know each other, for them to meet each other. Because this whole marriage business in Japan, like in this book, it's not what we have now, especially like not in the Western society. It's nothing about like being in love. It's nothing about uh, like, 
I don't know, having an affection with each other or having like common things to do together, like being friends. It's nothing like that. It's more of a business matter, really. It's more of a business. So like, you, I will not spoil you because I feel like if I tell you what they did, uh, kind of to organize marriage, I will really spoil you the impression. So I will not tell you. Like, I really want you to read this book. It's very interesting. It's such a different, just perspective on life. So I would like I don't I will I don't want to spoil it for you. But I was just so surprised, especially when I first like read about what they were doing. It's just so incredibly different. So apart from the Miai, you also get to see, for example, the uh, recital of a traditional Japanese dance. Because like I said, Taiko, the younger sister, she is very enterprising, she is very active, she is constantly doing something. And so one of her uh, kind of activities was learning Japanese dance. And so there was one really beautiful chapter about how her like dance club um, came to Sachiko's house and they were like practicing it was very I'm not spoiling you anything with that but I just want to say that like that chapter to me was really interesting and I really enjoyed it you also get to visit Sakura viewing together with the family I mean you already know <laughs> that Sakura is a big part of Japanese culture but in this book it's kind of just shows it to you once again, shows it to you from a perspective of a Japanese family and like how it's um, an annual tradition, how they go to take pictures, how they collect those pictures throughout the years to see like how their children are growing, how they themselves are changing. It was very like, I don't know, like a family spirit, you know, it, it, it gave me very much like a strong family spirit. I really liked it. A few really gripping moments in the book. In the first part, there will be one and it will have to do with a natural disaster. Because natural disasters do happen in Japan. And they happen, I would say, more often than, for example, in my region in Russia. Like where I come from in Russia, natural disasters are not really a big problem. In Japan, they do happen and they do happen not like super often you know every year there will be something this book also shows you one natural disaster and it's just yeah again from the perspective of the family it was super immersive it was so interesting and you, it's like it was one of the most gripping moments in the novel so i also really like that like i said the family in the book is very traditional However, the society of Japan at that time was moving forward, the culture was moving forward, the economics was moving forward, and they were opening up to the West. Like I said, you will see a few foreigners interacting with the family, some of them were their neighbors and their friends. So you see that Japan is slowly opening up to the West, and the society is changing. That's why you will see that like one of the main and the most prominent topics in this book will be the conflict between the old culture and the new culture. The family being so traditional, the family is very resistant towards this new culture approaching and they kind of try to preserve this small island of their family in this kind of traditional way. and their house like the sachiko's house in Ash ashia to me personally when i was reading this book it felt almost like a time capsule you know i don't know why but i just thought about it like this their house felt like this never changing frozen kind of in past frozen in time space like a time capsule and the sisters themselves, especially like two younger sisters, because they're like still not married, so it means like they're not affected by having children, they're not affected by special, I know, like biological things that come with having children. The two young, even Sachiko herself, even though she has one child, but like, so just mostly he was talking about these three sisters, not Tsuruko, but like three sisters. He always describes them as being younger like looking younger than they actually are, like significantly younger, like like seven, eight years younger 
than they actually are. And to me, it felt like sisters themselves are frozen in time, along with the house, along with the family, like their whole surroundings and themselves are frozen in time. So that's how I felt about them, like not wanting to move, move, move forward, not wanting and like being kind of afraid of changes, not welcoming really any changes to their lifestyle, to their family. And yeah, just being kind of resistant towards new things and towards new cultures, towards new ways of life. Another thing that I really enjoyed that was portrayed in this book and that kind of gives you this feeling of this book being this ultimate Japanese novel is that you not only get to see the outer life, of the family, like their customs, what they do in their daily life, but you also get to see their inner life. He is actually very straightforward, like Tanizaki, he is very straightforward. He shows you all the thought process of the characters, like thought after thought, idea after idea. You will see exactly how they view the world, you will see exactly like their thought process in like trying to solve an issue and like how a certain issue will affect them. You get to see it from their own perspective, so you don't really need even to guess, which is good because for a Westerner it would be very difficult to guess. I feel like for a Japanese person they would probably you don't need all of these explanations because they would kind of probably understand what was the problem in certain aspects of their lives. For a Westerner sometimes maybe it would be difficult to understand and we would have a different idea of what they should have done. But then when you actually see the things from their perspectives, it's actually, you know, it makes sense. <laughs> uh, not necessarily like you would think of it, but yeah, I just found it very interesting, like seeing their whole thought process inside of their heads. It was really also fascinating. So the sisters and their everyday life are, like I said, the main um, focus of the novel. In terms of the plot, nothing much really happens. You just follow their everyday life and what they do on their everyday life and yeah, certain events that happen to them. And because in the plot nothing much really happens, this book is very character-centered, which I really loved. I mostly read books for the characters. So that's why this book was just like for me. All of the people here, they're all flawed. You start with kind of, you know, normally you start a book with trying to find a character for whom you will be rooting for, right? Like whom you will support, who you think is this like this kind of good person or maybe an interesting person to follow. They're all definitely interesting, but none of them is like a good person, like you cannot call anybody in the family a good person. They, at some point in the book, they will do something like that kind of really sometimes exasperated me, like be that Yukiko, be that uh, Taiko-san, even Sachiko, like when Sachiko is probably the most mature of them all, maybe the least selfish, though maybe that's not true. Maybe that's, they're all pretty selfish, actually. So, yeah, I, it's what I'm trying to say is that you don't really know, like, whom to call a good person, for whom uh, would you cheer, because all of them at some point will do something really exasperating. Uh, and in my case, made, those things made me really angry. However, like a few people noted on Discord, and I agree with them. That's what makes this character so real, is that they are not perfect, they are actually just human. By the end of the book you know that they are just human, you neither love them nor, nor you hate them. They're not good, but they're not bad either. Everybody has some good qualities to them, some, some qualities that you really do respect, and then at the same time, the same person has some qualities that you just really don't like about them, that you really just cannot accept. Um, and I liked this duality, and I liked the way this duality was introduced 
and I just liked that it was there because it's just so human. The writing of this book is very straightforward. It's not lyrical at times. At times it can be like a little bit maybe lyrical, but not really that much. It's very straightforward. It's pretty much like this is what happened, this is what happened. She went there, she did this, She like she was thinking that. Like it's pretty much, you know, just a narration of events. Not very lyrical, not very philosophical either. It's just like, that's how it is. And I also kind of enjoyed it. I also liked it. So in the end I gave this book 4 out of 5 stars. I would give it 5, but the ending... Like, this novel, like, throughout, like, the whole chunk of the book, it's actually very kind of slow-moving. Just their slow, peaceful lives retold to you in a very slow and peaceful manner, which is not boring, but it is quite slow moving, except for like certain parts which were like really gripping. The last part becomes like really very fast-paced, like all the events they just kind of fly like that, they just fly in front of you and I was reading and I was like, oh, this is a change, something happened. <laughs> And then the last line, I will not read it to you, but honestly, this is a very unfortunate last line. This is a very unfortunate last line. <laughs> I don't know why he why he wrote it like that. Like, why? Why would he choose to leave us with that last line? I When I feel... Because on Discord, when I was reading it, I was reading quite slowly. I, like, finished you know, the last day of May. So a lot of people actually finished the book before me and everybody's reaction was, what was that last line? What happened with that last line? What's the problem with the... And I was like, interesting, interesting. I want to see that last line, but I didn't. I didn't, I didn't. I was waiting till the very end. I was reading patiently. And then when I came to that last line, I was like, oh my god, Mr. Tanizaki, Mr. Tanizaki, I don't understand your problem with your last line. What was that? Why would you choose to leave me with those words? I love your novel so much and you leave me with those words. I have just question? Question, Mr. Tanizaki, question. The last line of the novel is just... <sighs> Well, that's a pity, <laughs> I would say, that's a pity, <laughs> but I heard or like somebody also mentioned on Discord that he was kind of rushed to finish the novel by his editors, and I'm like, okay, that's because of the editors, those people, why did you rush the person? Maybe he would choose a better last line, but yeah, anyway. So yeah, just because the last part was kind of super rushed and because of that unfortunate last line, I gave it four stars. But honestly, it could have been like five star read for me, it's no problem. So yeah, there you have it, my review of The Makioka Sisters by Junihiro Tanizaki. Should you read this book? I think you should. I really think you should. Which edition to choose? I read from this edition, I, I didn't see like others. I know that there is a vintage edition, like, like Red Spine vintage edition. Those are usually floppy. This book is really like not floppy, you see like it stays closed like that. <laughs> um, but, but, it's really pretty really beautiful. Oh, also this vintage edition, they have like typos. At first when I was reading, I was like, maybe I just don't know something about the English language. Maybe it's not the typo. Maybe it's just I don't know something. But then again, people on Discord were like, what are the, what are with the typos in this edition? I'm like, oh, okay, so they're, they're typos. So yeah, just be aware that sometimes here you will see mistakes. Uh, but yeah, they were like not super distracting for me at least. But it's really, really beautiful. It's very beautiful. And it also has like French flops, 
and the end papers so yeah i really enjoyed my experience with this edition i thought it was beautiful and i don't really mind it not being floppy though it really isn't like you kind of have to hold it because it will close that is my review i hope you enjoyed it i hope you will give the makyoko sisters a read because it's really really a worthy novel and it's such an interesting just look like very close look um at the life of people from like a different part of the world which westerners for example are not very familiar with really it was really very interesting so i would highly recommend it and it's a very easy read because the language is so straightforward it's really easy to read and i'm sure you will enjoy it so yeah that is the end this is my review four out of five stars just because of a very rushed ending and a very unfortunate last line <laughs> very unfortunate last line okay yeah thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed i hope you will give this book a read because it really does deserve uh, your attention and yeah i hope you're having a very good day i hope you're reading good books and enjoying them and i will see you soon in my next videos thank you very much for watching bye